you know, it's it's like, why do people get upset when the Exxon Valdez spo uh, spilled oil over in Alaska? Well, it's because everybody on Earth depends on the, the fish in the sea and the, and the water in the ocean, you know? Um, it's going to impact them a little bit, you know? You know, you don't, you know, country, the Soviet Union just doesn't, or, or I'm not do that, um, the United States isn't going to decide to just blow off a nuclear bomb in the middle of uh, the desert every 4th of July just because it, it's the time to do that because they know it's going to have an environmental impact over time, year in, year out, and finally, you know, the rest of the world depends. You know, we're all, we're all here we're at a certain... There's certain places you don't go because you have to live and coexist with other people or countries or whatever. And so what my point is is... It probably would have been a better example if I said, okay, I'm, in, I'm just going to fix what I think is wrong with Gnome. So I put all the effort in, fix what I think is wrong with Gnome, and I put that in my own distribution. <coughs> well, let's say the Gnome project doesn't like my fixes. They don't put it into Gnome, and the next official release of Gnome, 9 out of 10 distributions don't have my fixes in there. My fixes. And then after two or three releases later, my fixes don't actually fit in quite right with the newer version. In fact, it breaks things if I add those fixes. So then I have to go and massage it every single time the new thing comes out. And pretty soon, it gets to be a very tiresome exercise of going in circles. You know, okay, now Ubuntu 10, you know, in uh, April, Ubuntu 10.04 is going to come out. And, um... Because they have a schedule every six months, April and October. That's what's 10, 10, and 10, 4. And, you know, so if I spent maybe two months trying to get my, with, with the source code that I have, to get my GNOME to be more like KDE 3 and fit in with the bunch, I can get it running, well, if I had the programming skills, theoretically I'd be able to get it running, fit it in perfectly integrated with the bunch of 10, 10 here. But then we'd have to deal with it six months and then in a year and then in 18 months and it would just be too hard to do unless of course the folks at GNOME took my changes and if they don't accept the patch well that's a reason to be pissed because that means now you're going to have to be patching your stuff and maintaining your own little corner of the world every single time because there are there are many more advantages to other things that are peripheral to what you want to fix so for example um just the fact that um, <coughs> there's something called the GDK, you know, the, the GIMP, you know, GTK, the GIMP, GIMP toolkit. You know, I imagine that the borders around the outside of my Firefox there are are made of, you know, JTK, and I, I'm I'm going to want to be able to use JTK every every time it's up. I'm probably never going to mess with it. But then maybe if I'm relying on JDK with my little changes, I'm going to have to change my changes to keep up with the G. You know, so it's that kind of difficulty and that kind of integration. And so the the deal is is that these the reason why they're not so frantic about most of the distributions aren't so so worried about releasing a quality product because they want people to call them and ask them for support and pay for their support. Um, it used to be the box sets would arrive at, um, you'd buy the box set at Fry's for 40, 50 bucks, and you'd get free support. And what it really meant was you're really paying for support and they're just giving you this box set for free. Well, they've cut that cost out and that's why Red Hat's making money now on top of charging a lot for enterprise desktops. Where, but a lot uh, those enterprise desktops cost a lot less than Sun, and therefore Sun has gone by way of been swallowed up by Oracle and disintegrated, and will probably Oracle isn't going to go out and change their business plans and suddenly start selling enterprise servers. They're probably just going to think they've got some neat technology that they might be able to integrate their their database a little better into mainframes, but they're not going to do anything else. They've dropped open off everything. They're just going to drop all that. They're, they're going to cut their costs and they're going to stay profitable. I'm certain of that. Um, so it's not that they're anti open source, it's the fact that they need to make money because they're a business. So, you know, it gets frustrating. You think, well, 
it used to be people thought, oh, it's such good news that you know they they didn't think about they didn't think about this. They're saying, okay, well, businesses are now embracing Linux. That must that's going to be good for us, right? Not, no, <laughs> not necessarily. Um, they're going to use Linux to whatever advantage or whatever business help they need. And right now, in Unix space, and there still is a part of the nation's and the world's infrastructure for for um, on servers that you know places that need run programs that need like a government you know really big large the DMV or something like that. They need this huge database to keep track of everybody's files, and so they need these huge enterprise servers that Windows don't run on. So Linux is pretty damn nice for them. And it's better than anything the sun can turn out, and so they're going to do that. And they're going to they'll go with Linux, and that's why Unix is that's why sco has gone down. That's why Sun. They're all going to all the Unix vendors are going to go bye bye. It's going to be Linux. I can guarantee you guarantee you that. And so the model really is is that these companies when they make money, most of their customers are going to come out of those you know, non-civilian or very large business type of places that don't really match uh, the, uh, your average home desktop users or, or small business situation such as I'm in. And so uh, if they're not making any money there, they're not going to pursue it. They have to, if Linux at least has to pay for itself or whoever it is. So if Shuttleworth wants to be a you know, a good guy and try to give Linux a chance on the desktop, then, you know, eventually he's going to want to have it pay for itself, I'm, I'm sure. And, you know, and he better make the right choices as he goes. And right now he's a little bit off the beaten path with, with Debian. Every t now every time that they release a new version of Ubuntu, they got to take their raw Debian base and then they have to insert this upstart system that Debian doesn't have. And meanwhile, a bunch of users that try to look for answers in Debian aren't going to find it in Debian because <coughs> this upstart system is being used. Got a long stop.